Next thing I would like to look at is rolling on your screen and it's another interesting piece. It says Black Star Liner returns with Magdan. Ha. This is Magdan. He's a businessman. And Songo Lagoon Salt. Controversy. The man finally gave us the opportunity to speak to him. And he made it clear. He asked the Adan Songo Lagoon on paper. And at the same time, he has been legally given the full concession by the state. He went ahead to say, if I don't have the whole of the lagoon, I don't want it. And he gave his reasons. Other concessions failed because they shared the concession. But he wants a monopoly. How did they fail? According to him, you need to spend a lot of money to deceal the lagoon. Who is going to spend the money to deceal it? So another person can go into it from his concession and pick up the salt. Will they all agree to come together and finance the deceal thing? No. According to him, the part of the lagoon where the deceal thing is supposed to take place is in one man's concession. And if it's in your concession, you would be required to deceal it. But if you don't desilt it, it will affect all other concessions. And if you desilt it, other concessions would go into it, silt it up again, because their activities will cause the whole lagoon to silt up again. And one man would continue spending money to desilt it, according to Magdan. I don't know much about salt. So for that matter, he wants a total monopoly of the thing. At that Songo Lagoon, natives say no. There's a big wrangling, fighting, shooting, and a lot more. But today, we are not talking about the Songo Lagoon. We are talking about the Black Star Line Incorporated Limited, BSL. Hey! Hey! What is McDan saying? Run it! And let's look at it. It's deep. Come here. Come. It says, Magdan to revive defunct Black Star Line. Hey, do you know what this is? Watch it. It says, the Magdan group of companies is set to bring life into the defunct Ghana Black Star Line as it procured two shipping vehicles and two cargo planes to begin running an African shipping line. Kaya Jeme. Kaya Jame. Kaya Jame. Watch it. Now the African shipping line will be in the style of the defunct Black Star Line in its resolve to support opportunities. There are in the African continental free trade area agreement. The erstwhile Black Star Line BSL was a government-owned shipping line which was established by Ghana's first president, Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, in October 1957. After his government commercially engaged representatives of Zim, Israeli national shipping line, with an initial capital of 500,000 pounds. Bring the photo of Nkrumah before I continue, or else the program will end here. Kaya Jame. Kwame Nkrumah. October 1957. When did Ghana gain independence? March. April, May, June, July, August, September, October. Seven months later, a huge shipping line in Ghana. Who could ever do this? Ha! We're getting deeper and deeper. Hey! This will frighten you. Yes! Watch this. The BSL, that's the Black Star Line shipping line. Oh God. Lord God have mercy. Which was a source of pride 
for Ghanaians in the 70s, emulated the American civil rights leader, Marcus Garvey, who established a shipping company called the Black Star Line in 1919. Nkrumah was only 10 years old. At the time that the original Black Star Line was established by Marcus Garvey, and he himself had gone to buy a ship that was the White Star Line and changed it into Black Star Line. Jesus have mercy. Nkuma was only 10 years old. A kind owned and operated by black people that will link America, the Caribbean, Africa, and giving them direct access to shipping and tourism opportunities. It died out of thievery and mismanagement. In fact, 1919, it died in 1922. Because of thievery and mismanagement. And when Marcus Garvey asked black people to contribute, they came out in their numbers and contributed. At the time, they had four such shipping lines, including the Frederick Douglass, and so on and so forth, including the Yamot. We can go into the history deeper and deeper. From one shipping line, he made four more. In the days of Nkrumah, he started that shipping line. But let me go deeper. Black Star Line was amongst the renowned global cargo service providers which had been active in Africa in the freight forwarding services for a couple of decades dealing with major corporate accounts to handle their air freight, ocean freight projects and BB handling, vessel chartering, Customs clearance and transportation offering complete end-to-end -end handling solutions. However, the company went defunct as its operations grounded. Dash. Come here. Ha! 1919. Nkuma was 10 years. When the Black Star Line was initiated and started by the great... Mosiah Marcus Garvey from Jamaica, St. Anne. Oh, what a man. Hey, as a prophet. Hear me now. He built it. I have goose pimples all over me right now. From that, he had four other shipping lines. And look at the statistics. The Oceanic Steam Navigation Company. Hey, Black Star Line. It was a partnership, a black people partnership, and it was in the shipping and transportation business. Founded in 1919, it went defunct three years later in 1922. They had had four more, hey. and it was bankruptcy that finished it, and it served the transatlantic, the same transatlantic that was used for slavery. Marcus Garvey was a smart dude. Come on here. Come. The Black Star Line, 1919 to 1922, was the shipping line incorporated by Marcus Garvey, the organizer of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, UNIA, and other members of the UNIA. The shipping line was credited to facilitate the transportation of goods. And eventually... African Americans through that the African economy. Did you hear that? Bring people home from the diaspora. What you today call year of return. Watch it. It says it derived its name from the White Star Line. Did I tell you that or not? Did I tell you that or not? Did I tell you that or not? White Star Line. Huh? That's why he derived his name. He bought the ship and changed the name from White Star Line to what? Black Star Line. Blow them fire. Blow some skirts to the bongo clippings. Hear me now. Now the Black Star Line became a part, in fact, a key part of Garvey's contribution to the Back to Africa movement. Kai, somebody would understand this. It was mostly unsuccessful. Partially due to infiltration by federal agents, CIA, 
entered into it. FBI, dirty maggots, came into it and grounded it. They couldn't believe why black people uniting. They would not agree. Hey! It was one amongst many businesses which the UNIA originated, such as the Universal Printing House, Negro Factories Corporation, and the widely distributed and highly successful Negro World Weekly Newspaper. I'm not done with you. Watch this. The Black Star Line and its successor, the Black Cross Navigation and Trading Company, operated between 1990 and 1922. It stands today as a major symbol for Gabbay followers and Pan-Africanists. It is not to be confused. Listen, oh. Listen. It is not to be confused with the Black Star Line, the State Shipping Corporation of Ghana. Hallelujah. 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 But what has that shipping company done for Ghana? Listen, the flag of Ghana adopted a black star as a, a homage to their own shipping line. Did you hear that? The black star line, which was the national shipping corporation of Ghana. This is where I wanted to bring you to. That is it. So Nkrumah sat back and said, ah, this was what Marcus Garvey was doing. Remember, Nkrumah was a student of Marcus Garvey. In other words, he was a Garveyite. In other words, he was in the school of Marcus Garvey. Just like Nkrumah is. We are students of Nkrumah. Students of his ideology. In fact, the nation of Islam, whose boss right now is Louis Farrakhan, took Marcus Garvey's ideologies and built that up into the nation of Islam, injecting it with religion. Jesus. The self-sufficiency, the independence of black people. Come here. That's, a, that's what it is. Nkrumah sat into it and decided to nurture it, decided to work it out, and also introduce the same black star line. So you see that it's not a joke where Magdan is going. Magdan is about to handle a huge chunk of history. Hey! This is not a joke. I would have personally said, can Magdan individually do it? But I am an optimist. Left to me alone. The whole nation should come into it. This is not for Magdan alone. Can Magdan do it? Look, i tell you something. Hilary man. Put his photograph there. Hey! Do you know Hilary Man? That's him. From Bolu. He was the president of the republic. From 1971 to 1981 December. When Rawlings kicked him out. When Hilary Man was the president of the republic of Ghana. He reintroduced the Black Star Line. And injected a lot of energy and power into the Black Star Line. The Black Star Line had 10 more 16,000 ton ships or vessels. Kai, somebody would understand. Dodo, shake it and boruba. Kai, listen, I said, in the days of the PNP, they did so well, injected a lot of energy into the Black Star Line after the NLC and MS, SMC1, SMC2, and the rest came to collapse it. They were all bringing down the image of Nkrumah. Remember the burning of the pictures, burning of everything, effigies of Nkrumah, burning of his books and all that. His legacies were also burnt down. Hilary Man came in in the spirit of Pan-Africanism and injected energy into the Black Star Line. There are 10 ships. More than what Marcus Garvey had. 10. But after the PMP, kaput. They killed it because of wickedness. Hi! Hey! Where's Atta Mills? Jesus have mercy. This man is in heaven. He's in heaven. He's eating with God in heaven. This man, when he came into the presidency, one of the first things he said, I want to reintroduce the Black Star Line. That's what this man said. He tried. 
he couldn't do much. This man, he died whilst he was president of the republic. No other president has ever thought about the Black Star Line. That's why I am a little shaky when Magdan alone, as an individual, is going to handle such a national treasure. Especially that Nam One. Did I say Nam One? Hey, Jesus. Ah, come here! Magdan! Magdan alone handling this national treasure. In fact, global treasure. Can he do it? As I again, he's an, I am an optimist, but I think that the nation should come together and handle this. This is not for one man. For Magdan, I say congratulations. You have a Pan African mind to deal with the Black Star Line. But again, Again, if I may say this, this was the same man who said he had stopped employing natives, Ghanaians, because they are not loyal. He prefers dealing with foreigners, Turkish, Chinese, Japanese, Afghans. How do you handle the Black Star Line, such a Pan-Africanist gem, when you don't want to employ Ghanaians? He has never apologized for that. He has never come out to say, oh, what I said was misconstrued. As long as you still have that mentality, I am not your supporter. Mm -mm. Davida. Ha! No matter how bad it is, you see, Fibiano, Mensa Womb, there are thieving Americans, there are criminal Japanese and criminal Chinese. If you have never seen criminal Chinese, then you are not Ghanaian. They are there on the Galamsey field. Will you say you won't employ them? Until Magdan comes out to boldly clarify this. I am not a supporter of Magdan in that aspect. For the Black Star Line, I salute you. But are you qualified for it? Do you have the right Pan-Africanist mind for it? You might have the money, but it's not all about money. The passion, the ideology is also important. Come here. And dash away that photo. Dash it away. My name is Black Rasta. Black Pot. Black Pot. Black Pot. Black Pot. Black Pot.